Dressing Up a Florentine Lady, 1418-19, by Prior Attire. Today, we are looking at the layers worn by a Florentine upper class, the camicia, camorra, and giornera, loosely translated as the shift, cattle, and an overgown. We are starting with the camicia, a shift or a chemise. It was usually made in soft linen, a fabric that breathes well and can be washed frequently. It sported a new, very generous cut, unlike more fitted chemises seen at the time in the north of the continent. It was a fashion that would pick up and be seen in a variety of Renaissance styles across Europe. The neckline and sleeves are gathered into narrow bands and the cuffs close to the hook and bar or buttons. Gamurra, the kirtle. The cut was not that different from the mainstream fashions but already indicated regional variations. The waist was slowly creeping up, a trend we see fully developed especially in the 1419 styles in Florence and Venice. Gamurra could be plain in light wool or, for a more affluent townswoman, in fancy silks. Bodices were usually lined with linen, whereas the skirt could be lined or unlined depending on personal preferences and season. This one is in very light silk, woven with square pattern. The bodice is lined with plain linen, but the voluminous skirts gathered to the bodice are unlined. The sleeves are lined in plain silk easier to slide them over the linen chemise. Allegedly, that is. The sleeves were usually fastened with points. If you had help with dressing up, the sleeves could be put on separately, much easier. Me? I need to make do my own, so sleeves are tied in already. A bit trickier? especially with the huge sleeves of the camicia, but I think we've just about done it. Way well, hey. Success. Well, almost. The chemise is pulled out through the openings in the sleeves and between the sleeves and the bodice. It was a very clever design, allowing for more ventilation in hot climate. But a very pretty one too, that caught up in the Northern Europe in the 16th century. The bodice is interlined with stiff buckram to give me some support and control over the bosom. I'm also sporting some breast binding under the chemise. Um, for that, see a closer, a bit risque peek at the end of the video to that effect. Just an additional precaution, not necessary if you didn't need it, obviously. The bodice laces in front with one long tie. Here all ties, points, were made in wool on the russet with brass aglets. Bodices could lace at the sides and back too, but front was probably the most common. I used brass rings set in the gamura but worked eyelets were used just as frequently. The lacing is from the bottom up, helping to keep the assets up and well supported. The lucid cord has a bit of stretch in it. This helps with both lacing and comfort. Almost there. At, at least it's faster than buttons. A bit more. Let us tighten it up a bit. Although it seems like a long time when you watch, it actually takes just a few minutes, especially if I'm doing it at full speed with nobody watching. 
final adjustment, pulling out the chemise nicely. And all done. Sort of. Almost there. Yay! Right. Shoes next. They are leather with gold braid decoration that matches the gamura. Stockings or hose, as shown, were already in place. Obviously. Let's buckle them up. The shoes close with a buckets, buckled strap. I'm trying to put them in a manner that would not involve too much leaning in. Not upskirting either, please. Right. Next. A belt next. Not always necessary, but handy for hanging stuff from. Stuff like eating implements, purses, keys, etc. Hmm. A little purse for some coins and a hanky. Oh, not a bad size for a mobile phone either. Bling choices. Amber beads or Jade and Pendant. The Oracle hath spoken, husband, so green bling it is. We're very fiddly fastening. Just my luck. A matching ring. Well done. A bit of a close up for you. Gamura is enough to wear indoors or maybe for an informal outing to the market or lounging on a patio with friends. But for, but for a more formal occasion, a gown is required. A few types were in fashion, depending on status and occasion. A job, cotta or a jornaire. Jornaire was a voluminous loose garment, falling in folds from the shoulders. It could have been cinched with a belt all around, or just halfway, as shown. A perfect example of a formal overgown that is light and suitable for a warmer climate. This example is made out of silk and brocade and lined with lightweight silk. It is decorated with a matching braid and very, very light. Male versions, short and often almost circular, were also popular. A posher version of simple heraldic tabard, perhaps? Obviously, for men, not women. Don't. Many women in paintings sport translucent veils on their heads. They may look Great in the paintings, but my silk veil is a real pain to keep on. Hence needed. As for hairstyle, the front hair is short and curled, the back caught in a bun and secured with a net. One of those very few periods when head necklaces were actually okay. Not happy. Let's curl the ends a bit. The ends of the veil were often seen twisted nicely. Maybe we'll work better on linen. That silk has one of its own. But hey, let's see if it stays for close up. It stays. It stays. Belong.
that's it from me today. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm. Oh, almost forgot. The promised breast binding. Don't have delicate constitution. Leave now.